Discard an Ash to summon our Diablo Star. Okay. Diablo Star setting up into the back row our original Sinful Spoils. We are playing under Nibiru right now. We're on three summons, five summons, and the whole field gets attributed. Oak reborning the Ash, triggering the Poplar after being added to summon itself onto the field. We're on four summons. Adding from the deck our Divine Temple Field Spell, which will equip into the back row a Flame Burge. And just like that, we didn't go into Apollo USA. We're now fifth summon Link Rebo. So do we activate the Nibiru right here, right now? The Poplar is activating to equip itself into the back row. We don't, and now it gets negated. It's like, you, you have to. You have to ask yourself, can they make Apollo? Yes, then we Nibiru. Is it optimal to Nibiru then anyway? Probably not, but you still gotta do it. Where is a situation where you would not have to do it? If you have an impermanence, or let's say you have a Gamma, you could let them make the Apollo, you activate Nibiru, they chain Apollo, you then Imperm, you then activate Gamma, you have something to negate the Apollo like an Effect Veiler also. Otherwise, you just gotta do it. You gotta do it! Now, Flame Burge will be equipped into the back row of the IP Mascarina, which will be summoned onto the field during the opponent's turn to then be usable during the main phase to Link Summon. Jet Synchron discarding our dead Gamma to Reborn. We're now linking off the Promethean and the Jet Synchron into the Ambo Whale. Now we're going to try to Nibiru because we're attempting to end our turn here. Get that free negate, take the negate from four negates down to three. So what is our disruptions here? We have one, two, three monster negates, which Nibiru could have disrupted. So if we don't even have the Apollo USA, what were our disruptions? We have the ability of summoning the Mascarina onto the field, then linking up with it during the opponent's turn, which could be, let's say, a Unicorn or an Apollo USA from that play. We also have on summon, the Promethean Princess will destroy the monster to then reborn itself. So let's see. Let's go, let's go. Nadir Servant locking our extra deck out to send an Entis, which will pop a card in the field. Activate onto the Apollo USA, mate. That is a negate from three negates now down to two. Okay. What now, what now? Dogmatica Ecclesia, we're gonna chain the Flame Burge, summon the Mascarina from our back row onto the field to then use its effect to link during their turn. Now what are we doing exactly? The is gonna be activating to search our deck for a Dogmatica Punishment. Searching for nothing because the Apollo USA is gonna use one of its two negates now down to one. Negate. Mascarina, what they could have been doing was attempting to enter the battle phase and in response to that, we're activating Mascarina to make a Zelantis. okay? Zelantis will banish the field, triggering the Flame Burge to summon onto the field. I guess we don't have to use its effect. So this states that it's the ignition effect of banishing the field. It's not a trigger effect. So that it doesn't do that during their turn, except during the battle phase. During the battle phase, you could destroy cards on the field up to the number of co-linked monsters in the field. So we have two co-linked, we have two destroyed during the battle phase. Interesting. Flame Bird summoning two level one fires. Oak on summons going to reborn the banished Jet Synchron. The Ash is going to add from the deck to the hand. Get summoning. Get searching for another Ash for a follow-up play here. Nibiru <laughs> on our own turn as the Apollo USA uses up its fourth and final negate. It's a hard one's return. Now we got the Zelantis effect popping up to two cards on the field here. Very interesting. Rarely will you ever see this card be used like that. Okay. We know that Nibiru is there. We don't have any more negates. We're on summon number one, formula synchron on summon activate to draw a card. Oak is gonna send itself plus Apollo to summon from the deck a flame bird on summon number two. Uh, we can make a Baron to floor here. Equip the Mascarina. Make the Baron to floor and we now can negate that other Nibiru. Lemon, how are you gonna lose this? I don't understand. Flame Burge being triggered after being sent to the graveyard to reborn two level one fires from the graveyard. We saw this during the opponent's turn. We're seeing it again during our turn, reborn from the grave or banish. And Ash also search, searching for a Curry Kara Divine Incarnate. Ain't no way. Popping the Welcome Labyrinth. Do not negate this. You know that he has Nibiru. Come forth and summon Ariana. Ariana on summon, activating to search our deck. We time out? I, I do not understand. Torby discard from the hand to set up a big welcome usable next turn. Ash is sending itself plus the Jet Synchron to summon a Poplar from the deck, which will activate to search our deck for the Sinful Spoils. Send the Ariana for a Curry Kara Divine Incarnate. We have 11,000 damage on the field. 
Now making a Sunlight Wolf. Lady's gonna summon itself onto the field, blocking attack, activating the... What? Did we act? What? 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 How? Why? Why didn't we negate? I don't. The timer. He toggled off, and then he forgot to hold left click on the. <laughs> no way. We could have also max seed. Max seed's draw two. Draw one. Draw two. Baron to four negate. His timer is so low. He had to toggle off and he wasn't quick enough to toggle back to auto or hold left click in response to the Nibiru in order to negate. Ain't no way that just happened. We're gonna be summoning Mascarina from the back or onto the field. Put more time in the clock. It's not me, I'm not the one doing it. Tell Konami to do it. If games are now more grindy, you just have to, I don't know, get used to the uh, gameplay, making quicker actions. There is a lot of efficiencies you could do and get used to in game to make sure you don't time out. Like knowing exactly where the activation prompt is, like clicking here preemptively, not waiting for the yes, no, just click it preemptively. Knowing that trigger effects of a monster is gonna be right here. So clicking it preemptively as it's popping up, using the new change, which allows you to see your entire deck and not have to scroll. So seeing the whole deck when picking a card, just like that, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Tapping right click on trigger effects, knowing that you don't want to activate them. So there's a lot of things you could preemptively click and, you know, click, tap, spot there. It sounds cheesy, but it's something that you're going to have to learn if you're going to want to play these decks that are grinding further into the games. Lovely. Yeah, you got a min max. I have a good video on min maxing your movements in my Trushilla loop video. I Trushilla looped the opponent's hand. It took me more than 12 minutes in my turn one to loop the opponent's entire hand. And you may be thinking, how can you take 12 minutes when the time limit, I believe, is only three minutes? The animations and preemptively clicking. So the video is before some of the newer updates they added to the game to make it more efficient, but still. You had to fully practice that, and I still almost timed out. We looped the entire hand, and we had a negate on top of that. Let's go, Promethean Princess, come forth and summon from the deck. I should be banned for life for that. It was for a teaching experience. It was to teach you all to, how to play more efficiently. Come forth, Promethean. On the summon, we get to pop a, a monster we control plus yours. Chaos Angel on summon, get banishing. We are under the max C. Goodbye to the Promethean Princess for good. Now, I gotta say, this is the first time we're really seeing the power and strength of Promethean Princess and I think she's great. She is incredibly powerful. Being able to every single turn reborn from the grave and pop a card in response to them summoning, that's huge. One for one must discard a monster, summoning our Ash. So our timer's still low, right? Uh, are we gonna time out? <laughs> Adding a Poplar, Poplar come forth and summon, activate the Wanted very quickly. You also, another efficiency trick is, what I would be doing here is I would have my toggle off. With toggle off, all of your triggers will still happen as long as they're public knowledge. So the poplar being added, you have to hold left click on it being added if your toggle's off so that it makes sure it gets triggered. But beyond that, go back to toggle off and it will not ask you to use cross out designate after every activation. You have to confidently know when you can play on toggle off when you're under time. So toggle off, Diablo Star will, act, will still activate. It will still ask you with toggle off and the cross out designate will not bother you at all. We're going to be returning back to the deck that's sinful. So also your own maxi will not bother you with toggle off. I'd be toggled off right here, 100%. Toggle off, boar load still activates with toggle off. Equip a link in the graveyard. We now have a negate. Now what happens when I'm toggled off? I then hold left click with the proper in-game settings to then negate the Nibiru. So you gotta be quick. It, well, if we had a negate, we don't have a negate with the boar load, but hold the left click in response to the Nibiru to activate cross out designate. That does work. And with the proper in-game settings of seeing your full deck list, you don't have to scroll for the Nibiru. You get, you get to see your full deck, click the Nibiru. Chain Maxi to the Dragon's Prison, reborning a monster from our grave. Let's go, let's go. Flame Burge. We can then banish the Flame Burge and another monster up the feet. Whoa, Dragon and Dragon. <laughs> Flame Burge is a dragon, not a pyro. And goodbye to Borload. Very well done. Lemon, what is going on here? Torby's gonna reborn itself from the graveyard. The hard once per turn Nibiru has already been activated. The field spell's boosted. 
We are walled off by Torby. 2,000 defense. We were not big enough. We only have four cards left in the extra deck. We have a Hida, a Dark, a Celine Avida, an Access Code Talker. Okay. So if we had enough time, understand that we could have made Hida. We could have then made Celine. Celine could have then reborn a Spellcaster from the Graveyard, which would be the Diablo Star, which could have then made an Access Code Talker. But I don't think we have time to do that. He's so low on time, he could not make an Axis Code Talker. Ariana getting negated here. Torby could send Nibiru to set up a trap if we want to. Instead, we're going to link this off into Muckraker. Muckraker can reborn from the graveyard our lovely or our Chaos Angel to banish a card in the field. Wanted is going to be adding a Diablo Star to our hand from the Graver deck. So even under, it's important to note that, I'm sorry, there's so much happening in this duel, I just don't want, there's so much to say today. The Diablo Star plays really well against the Droll and Lockbridge. She sets a card so that Droll doesn't stop you from adding whatever you set from your deck. And the Wanted adds her from the graveyard, again, playing around Droll and Lockbird. Now got Lovely. You have big welcome to spin any card in the field back to the hand, which will trigger the effect of the Lovely to pop a card in the field, but... The Link Karibo is going to tribute the monster instead, which now stops the Lovely from triggering, and it will now not pop a card in the field. Or the hand. So that Link Karibo is important. And if your timer is low, for you to be able to chain Link Karibo at the low time, I, that, that's quite unbelievable. Goodbye to the Poplar. Poplar being triggered even during the damage step to equip the Flame Virgins, the back row, which will only summon from the back row if the opponent summons a monster, which... That's what Dragon's Ice Prison does. Now we can't really use this card because it will trigger the field spell. What do we do? Discard to summon our Diablo Star. Diablo Star equipping to the back row our Sinful Spoils. We're now going to send to the Graveyard for a Dark. We could summon a Dark Monster from the opponent's Graveyard. The Dragon Ice Prison is going to be summoning the Diablo Star to banish the Dark, but trigger the field spell to summon the Flame Burge from the back row onto the field. Oh my Jesus. Right? Trigger. Yup. <laughs> this, this deck is nuts. But because we are the non-turn player, the non-turn player is a higher chain link trigger, which means against a continuous spell and or field spell, on the higher chain link, we could pop it, stopping it from summoning the flame burge. Holy moly. Torby also being triggered. We're going to be fingering the Torby. There isn't a lovely in the graveyard to negate the one on the field, which we really needed to negate. Let's go, let's go. Now, even though this is negated from summoning the Flame Burge, we could still use the Sinful Spoils to sin- You popped the Flame Burge and not the Field Spell. Okay, that's interesting. Instead of allowing the Flame Burge to be summoned through the Field Spell, uh, wh why not just pop the- I guess, uh, you're triggering the effects now though, right? Like, uh, okay, that's kind of confusing. I would think that popping the Field Spell is correct. Okay, Flame Burge being triggered, Reborn from the Graveyard, Ash, and Oak. Oak will reborn the Banished Jet Synchron. Ash will add from the deck. Did we use up our normal summon yet? We have not. It's good to have this constant reminder if you used up your normal summon or not. That was not a normal summon. That was a special summon, Birch. We're down to two cards left in the extra deck. That's it. Celine Navida with three spells among both players' fields and her graveyards. We could remove three spell counters to summon a spellcaster from the hand or grave to then make... An Axis Code Talker. Yes. <laughs> no, no. We timed out. We don't have time. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot to do. You know, you gotta like click, click, Celine. You have to choose the extra monster zone because you don't want to have it on automatic. So you lose some time there. And then Celine, you have to, I think with Celine, you have to manually tap the three counters. So you have to activate Celine, and then you have to tap Celine, tap Celine, tap Celine. Only then, after tapping it three times, I wish it would just remove the three counters. Maybe if there's no other counters in the field, it would maybe be smarter. And uh, yeah, uh, we ran out of time. Ran out of time. And that even if we summon Access Code Talker, we still have to activate its effect to use one of the Link monsters. So then you have to click on the Link monster to gain the attack. And then do you even have enough time to banish and then pop? You won't have time for that. Oh, <laughs> Lemon, good job, good effort. Let's go. All right, a big topic of Snake Eyes is how effective is the Gamma? 
So we're gonna be focusing on one of the opportunities to activate that Gamma. If we open up with Wanted and they were to chain activate an Ash, that is a Gamma. Now the Diablo Star herself is an inherent special summon. She does not activate. She's kind of like Fenrir. What were we doing against Fenrir? We activate Maxi early. If we activate Maxi early, then that plays into Gamma. So let's see what Stardust decides to do. Wanted, Chain Maxi, gotcha. We got that Gamma, Gamma is in, let's do it. So this would have been either Ash or Maxi being activated, but we have Gamma to negate the Gamma, but we have Ash to negate your Gamma. So what's interesting here is that while Ash negates the Gamma, Gamma's not a hard one per turn, so Gamma can activate again to negate again, but not in the same chain. If we had a different Gamma, then that one could have activated. So it's still gonna be there. It's still gonna be looming, ready and waiting to be activating. And we know it's there, so how do we play around it? And now if they summon a monster, that will trigger the Promethean Princess to pop that monster plus our own card. We have Baron to Floor Omni Negate. We recycled our Ash Blossom. Let's do it. Now, Psalm Judgment pretty much negates everything except a monster effect. So Ash being used onto the Big Welcome, it's not gonna be able to negate that. And during the end phase, we're gonna steal that Gamma. Oh, do we have another level 10 Synchro? What are we doing here? What's going on? Activate Welcome Labyrinth. We're gonna chain Maxi, not using Ash onto it. Now, you may be thinking it's better to save the Ash for the big welcome, right? But also wrong because if they summon a Lovely onto the field here, the Lovely states that you cannot chain Ash to our big welcome. We're also chain summoning our Lady from the Hand onto the field. Come forth. Now we could use Baron to Floor to negate and then Baron to Floor cannot be negated. Well, actually we can't. We can't Baron. We can't Ash, but we did not summon Lovely. No Lovely, so we now can negate. Also triggering the Promethean Princess, which would have been the way to deal with the Lovely, but while Lovely's on the field in response to the Promethean Princess, that's when you would activate the Big Welcome, which they could not chain Baron to floor Ash to. Okay, okay. Ariana being triggered. Add from the deck our Ku Clock, which will make it so a newly set trap this turn will be activatable. Promethean Princess locking us into Fire Monsters only while it's on the field. Now the Amphibian Swarm Ship is going to be triggering to reborn a Sunlight Wolf on the graveyard here. Ash negate. We don't got Lovely. That's it. We had the counter to Ash. We had it. And now we have Baron to Floor pop a card in the field. Psalm Judgment cannot negate and destroy. Flame Burge is going to put the Lady Labyrinth into the back row, opening up the field for lethal damage here taking a game two victory. Very nicely done, very nicely done. Let me read the amphibian thing, the amphibious. So this stated if a card, if this card is destroyed, reborn a link three or lower in the graveyard. Disgusting, this has some good synergy. And then if that link three you summon from the graveyard gets destroyed, you could then destroy a card in the field. Holy moly, it works so well with the Promethean Princess. All right, starting off with our Ariana. Ariana is going to be in response, chain summoning our Lady Labyrinth from our hand, come forth. Now with the Ariana, we're gonna be grabbing our big welcome, which could summon a lovely, then trigger the effect to pop a card from the hand. We can also chain the lady to the big welcome if we don't chain the wanted to it. All right, we have Ash. So waiting for them to get a body on the field to play around in permanence could be good. Now imperm cannot be used on lady since she's untargetable, but it could have been used on the lovely here. We're gonna be chaining Max C while Ash is on the field to play around a potential Gamma in the hand. This will be adding Poplar, which will activate Poplar to summon itself on the field. So yeah, a lot of special summonings about to happen. Chain cross out designate to negate the Max C. All right. We do have the Dogmatic Punishment to pop two cards in the field. We could also banish a card from the graveyard and a card in the field. So we just wanna rip out a Pyro from the grave. That will be something. 
Poplar on summon, activating to search our deck for the Divine Temple of Snake Eyes. And first, we're going to right then and there activate our Dogmatica Punishment to punish both the Ash and the Poplar before the Ash activates to summon a Snake Eyes from the deck. So I would say this is pretty good timing. Chaining the Wanted to search our deck. We already have a Diablo Star, so we'll grab another one. Why not? Double Diablo Star. It does have the Engrave effect of returning a card back on the deck to draw one. Ariana being triggered to draw a card, triggering the effect of the Mao Long to return the Poplar back to the hand instead of popping it to go to the grave. That's interesting because it does have the engrave effect of being able to add a card in the graveyard to our back row, which would be itself potentially. So that's actually better than, uh, okay, better than popping. We newly drew off the Ariana and we set that newly drawn card, but it's not activatable to turn it set. We are equipping to the back of our Flame Bird, sending Poplar from the hands of the grave to summon our Diablo Star. Diablo Star activating. It, uh, it's like, I guess it was better to return it back to the hand, but it actually wasn't because you gave them fuel for the Diablo Star to then discard it, which was public knowledge as they added it from the deck to the hand. We're getting the effect anyway that we tried to stop. Uh, yeah, uh, would have been better to pop, but okay, that's fine, that's fine. Not too big of a deal here, equipping itself into the back row. Setting up the Sinful Spoils, Snake Eye ready to be activating. It's not a quick effect, so we gotta wait on it. Before it's activatable, we are whipping out our Lovely to maybe pop it before it activates. So we're gonna set up our Terrors of the Overroot, not activatable. Summoning our Lovely, return a card we control back to the hand. Trigger Lovely, pop the... Oh, you summoned while I have the Field Spell, which triggers the effect to summon our monster from the back row. What's crazy about this is it's generally only supposed to be triggered during the opponent's turn because it's when they summon. But all these decks that summon on your own turn, that's madness. We're gonna be summoning our Flame Burge from our back onto the field. Oh, we're popping the field spell. Forced to pop the field spell instead of the original Sinful Spoils. Sending the Poplar to summon the Oak. Oak is gonna be reborning the Poplar from the graveyard. We're going to steal the Poplar, banish the Poplar, and banish the Oak. Let's do it. Banish, banish. Okay, now what? We are gonna go for the draw one. Return the original Sinful Spoils to get that random draw. And uh, we don't really have disruption besides the double impermanence, which is not activatable on the lady, untargetable lady. This is not so good for Snake Eyes, actually. Ariana gonna get hit with the imperm. We could use the big welcome to dodge the impermanence which will then trigger the Lovely to pop a card in the field. Do we want to do that? First, we're going to change the Impermanence to set a new trap in the deck, and then, just as I said, dodge the Impermanence. Imperm again, but onto the Lovely this time. Negate. Now we're going to set a new trap, and the Ariana is not going to be negated. The new trap will be activatable if we set up with a Ku Clock, which we're instead setting up with a Torby. Torby discard the Ariana, setting up the Labyrinth Labyrinth. Activate Labyrinth Labyrinth. So what we could do here is we can get Lovely into the grave, which we're not doing. I, I think we probably should if we were to Link Summon right now, then activate a card like Terrors the Overroot, trigger the field spell to then reborn the Lovely back on the field, but no longer is negated, right? That would have been better. There's the Overroot sending the Diablo Star to then set a cross out designate from the back row, triggering the Labyrinth Labyrinth to instead of summoning the Lovely, we're gonna summon something else, which I think we really should have summoned that Lovely instead. Chaining the Max C to the Diablo Star, resummoning itself back onto the field. Send the cross out, reborn. Now, Diablo Star ideally sends Flame Burge, but the Flame Burge is not activatable because of our level one fires that got banished by the dragon card, the dragon's prison. So this was a big card, not only initially disrupting, but further plays have been disrupted. Now we got the called by finger. Reborn the Ariana, Diablo Star activating the setup during the back for the back row to be used next turn. We got the original sinful spoils. 7,500 damage on the field here. Hmm. The the Moo Cracker and, and being able to discard, I think, would have been good, right? Moo Cracker could discard any card to then reborn the Lady. Lovely would have been reborn with the Field Spell. Maybe we could have also even made a Chaos Angel. Chaos Angel, Lady, Moo Cracker, wouldn't that be game? 
We got Wanted Sinful Spoils grabbing a Diablo Star from the deck. Discard Nibiru to inherently special summon the Diablo Star. Does not activate in the hand. Now activating to set up a Wanted Seeker into the back row to be used next turn. Using Dogmatica Punishment to punish the Diablo Star, destroying her. Plus triggering the Lady to set up a big welcome to be usable next turn. Sending from the extra deck to the grave in Entis. Entis will now be activating to pop a card in the field. Lovely's activating to pop a card in the field. Ariana's activating to draw a card or add. Get popping. Original Sinful Spoils destroyed before activated. Labyrinth, what the heck? Full control. Controlling Snake Eyes. Now, this can add a fire monster from the graveyard or deck to your hand. It, well, okay, you add, you target a snake or a Diablo Star in the graveyard, return it to the deck, and then you could add a, you can add a level one fire first then. So you could grab a Kurikara or you could grab the Ash, a different Ash. Kurikara is here and you activated three of your monsters. Ariana, Lady, and Lovely could get tributed for the Kurikara Divine Incarnate and she's gonna be huge. 6,000 attack. Wanted, return back into the deck to then draw one, drawing toward Jet Synchron. Just like that, a searchable Curry Kara at 6,000 attack. We have Jet Synchron being linked off into Link Karibo. What's activable here? Just the impermanence. Imperm can be activated. We have Call of the Great Finger to banish and negate the Jet Synchron which we already paid the cost for discarding the Diablo Star to then also lose the Jet Synchron. Not good. It's a battle we go, wiping out the Torby. The Incarnate will be activating during the end phase to steal a monster from the opponent's grave. Now we're imperming. If we impermed early, she would have lost the attack and not have killed your Torby. Torby at 2000 defense. So I think we should have impermed a bit early. Yeah. And then now Lovely is being, I guess maybe you could uh, argue that saving the Imperm in case they had other plays, but we're pretty much in a simplified game state here where you pretty much know there are no more additional plays. Or I guess maybe they could have linked off the Curry Car, which you didn't want them to do. You wanted them to commit to this to being in the end phase. We have Big Welcome Labyrinth, which will not only reborn from the graveyard or summon from the deck or hand, but also with the Labyrinth Labyrinth will destroy a card in the field. If it's a monster, that will trigger the Lovely to pop another card in the field. Get popping. Goodbye to the Divine Incarnate. Trigger the Lovely. Trigger the Torby to summon itself onto the field, which could now make a Chaos Angel to banish any card on the field. Don't pop the Flame Burge unless they don't have two level one fires in the graveyard to reborn. Ariana searching for the welcome. We have 4,500 damage, and just like that, Labyrinth taking out Snake Eyes. Damn. 